Hi everybody, welcome back to our Vamble series. I am Mike and this is Sir Cedric, our 1988 Mercedes T1 Bremer, which we currently convert into an Overlander camper van. This time we want to build the solar system, which means we have to mount two solar panels on the roof and connect them to our Victron MPPT solar charge controller. That's in fact a quite easy job that nobody really has to be afraid to DIY. And I will show you my wiring diagram, which you can just copy if you want. So please stay tuned till the end of the video. As we need quite a lot of space for the components of our electrical system, we will build a proper compartment for that. And that will also double as our dinette. Let's start with a short retrospect. We built our roof rack DIY from 40 by 40 millimeter aluminum profiles, which we mounted on the roof with both solid and beautiful brackets. If you are interested in the details of building this roof rack, please check out the video linked above. The setup of our solar system consists of two solar panels from Tiger Expert with 150 watt each. So we have a total of 300 watt. They are extremely efficient with 24% energy conversion efficiency and have a very suitable length of 131 centimeter. So I can mount them in a transverse position on the roof rack or even in between the roof rack. 300 watt should be plenty of power for our small van, especially as we cook with gas and use the electric power primarily for our LED lights and the fridge and of course to charge our phones and laptops. Between the solar panels and the battery comes a Victron 100-30 MPPT solar charge controller. This MPPT maximizes the energy harvest and charges the battery with the correct charge algorithm. That's absolutely essential. Today we want to install the solar panels and this turns out to be a little bit more complicated than originally expected. We want to use these hammerhead bolts and they are inserted in the aluminium profiles. But the problem is then these bolts impede inserting the panel from the top. So I think the only way out is to partially dismantling the roof rack and then assemble part of that already here on the table. And that's exactly what we did. So we already removed this aluminum profile here. And now we will drill a hole into the aluminum frame of the solar panel. Of course, it's an awkward moment when you drill the first hole in your new 400 euro solar panel. But concerns are for no reason. After drilling the holes, we insert the hammerhead bolts and attach the aluminum profile to the frame of the solar panel with self-locking nuts. The panel is completely flat with the aluminum profile. So it will finally be within the roof rack, not on top of it. Before we mount this unit on the roof, we insert the hammerhead bolts and spaces up there. Well, we face a minor problem now because the bolts which I bought are 20 millimeter in length and it is just not enough because I didn't expect the aluminum profile of the uh, solar panels to be as thick as they are and also there are these angle brackets here which also uh, cost extra length so I definitely need bolts which are 30 millimeter in length and um, I don't have them in stock. Until we have the correct screws let's continue with another subject. And this is all the wood that we need for our dinette slash electric box and it's our usual 15 millimeter poplar plywood. We like to use pocket holes to build furniture and those mouse holes are for the cables later. Corner clamps make work so much easier if you want to have nice 90 degree angles. Our dinette has an L shape and this here looks already pretty good and solid. But we should also check if it fits. The dinette slash electric box is directly next to the sliding door. For us this position is great because we have perfect views while dining. We like this, let's call it open plan layout. The front of the dinette still needs two strips, which somehow have become the trademark for our interior. We use the routing machine to cut two lines in which we later insert small pine slats. 
The box then gets two layers of paint. First one layer of Osmo Decor Wax and then after sanding it one more time one layer of Osmo Hard Wax. The pint slats get a thin layer of Osmo Decor Wax in ebony black. As soon as the paint has dried we glue the pine slats into position. And same like the kitchen cabinets this dinette also gets one of the old badges from the former fire truck boxes as a souvenir. Before we put the dinette in its final place we add some small pieces of self-adhesive felt to prevent squeaks and rattles between the panels of the dinette and the toilet. This is a great and very easy hack I think. Okay, so our dinette slash electric box is in place and it fits very well. The cable kairos in there looks worse than it really is. We can easily sort that. But the first thing now what we do is fix everything on the floor with our usual method. That is the bolts and the anchor nuts in the floor subframe. For proper ventilation the electric box gets two grills. As tabletop we use a 10 mm pine plywood panel. That's rather thin for a tabletop but we don't want to make it too heavy. If it turns out to be too weak we could still opt for a thicker panel later. These pine plywood panels have a cool grain pattern and we enhance that with a thin layer of Osmo Decor Wax in ebony black and then several layers of Osmo Top Oil to get a durable surface. The same design we will also use for the cover of the electric box. With the dark paint it really resulted in a very nice uh, tiger effect of the wood grain and uh, now we will install both the dinette seat and table in the van. In order to have easy access to the electric box under the dinette we install the same massive flap hinges that we already used for the countertop of the fridge box. The cover is divided into two parts which are connected with small hinges. This solution was necessary to be able to open the electric box without having to remove the table. And this is now the last piece of our dinette and I am very sure you have no idea what this is for. But you will soon know. And now let's see if it works. So I think it should be strong enough that I can sit here. Yes, it doesn't break down. And this special part here is for my leg. Then at least I can leave one leg like this and can totally enjoy the landscape or the dinner or reading. And I think it's a very comfortable position. If we have some cushions here, I think it's fine. In order to have a flexible table, we use this kind of old school table leg. I already have that in my old Westfalia camper van, which is 40 years old. So that's really a very old construction, but nevertheless, I really like it and it works very well. Uh, it's just important to fix that in two positions. It's not enough to just uh, fix it in one position here. You definitely need a second piece uh, on the floor uh, to get a stable construction. With the mounting point at the floor and the bracket at the dinette, the table is 100% stable. As our tabletop is quite thin, we don't use screws into the wood, but better use nuts and bolts, but only three of them. And I think we found bolts with a nice design, so I don't mind that they are visible. The table is in place and this is the driving position. 
And this is our dining node. Wrong. And this is our dining position. I would say it's a big table, it's a comfortable position to dine and the second person can sit here. Also comfortable and I mean of course everything is not super big but it's a small van and we could manage to get the fixed bed, the toilet, the kitchen and a dinette in just 3.3 meter of space in this small T1 van. Meanwhile, we got the longer bolts to mount the solar panels on the roof. The panels have factory installed MC4 connectors. All we need are two of these MC4 Y connectors. And that's the finished installation up on the roof. I think the way to mount the panels within the aluminium profiles of the roof rack is a very clean solution. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. If anyone wonders where I bought these beautiful brackets, they are from TS Tiger Synchro and I can really recommend them because they are not just beautiful but also real quality pieces. They really make the difference and look absolutely awesome how they exactly follow the angle of the roof of this high roof T1. Of course you can find a link to this product but also all other products which I used in the description below. Now let's jump into the technical details how the wiring of my solar system looks like. I am not an electrician so this video is for entertainment only. I would advise you take my wiring diagram to your trusted electrician and ask for a professional opinion before you start yourself. And if you find something odd, don't hesitate to comment, but also let me know if you think it's correctly exercised. I have two solar panels with 150 watt each and the Victron 100-30 MPPT solar charge controller. The plus cables from the solar panels go to the Y connector into one combined plus cable, which is six square millimeter into the PV plus contact of the MPPT. And we do the same with the two minus cables, which go to the PV minus contact of the MPPT. But do not connect the MC4 connectors at this stage, only after completing the whole installation process. Next, I connect the MPPT to the battery, but not directly. Instead, the cables go to a main fuse box. I again use six square millimeter cables. The red plus cable goes from the MPPT battery plus to one plus contact of the main fuse box where it later gets a 30 amp fuse. The black minus cable goes from MPPT battery minus to one minus contact of the main fuse box. In my case, the battery is a lithium iron phosphate battery from Victron with a capacity of 160 amp hours. Yes, these batteries are expensive, but they are much more efficient in the long run because I can use nearly all of the 160 amp hours and not just half of it like with a lead acid battery. But I don't want to go into the details because there are enough videos on YouTube about the advantages of lithium batteries for a van. Okay, let's continue with the wiring. The battery plus gets a connection to the main plus contact of the fuse box. And the battery minus gets a connection to the main minus contact of the fuse box. For these cables I use 35 square millimeter. I don't have an extra fuse for the plus cable to the battery because it's just a few centimeters long. But if it was longer a fuse would be necessary. The only thing missing now is connecting the battery management system or BMS which is necessary for the Victron battery to prevent overheating, overcharging or draining the battery to dangerous levels. My BMS is a Victron VE bus BMS. Connecting that is very simple. And there are two black cables from the battery to the BMS. But don't worry, you cannot mix up the two cables because they have unique connectors which only fit in the correct contact of the BMS. 
Then I have to connect the MPPT to the BMS. This is done with this Victron VE Direct cable, which is connected with VE Direct at the MPPT and the charge disconnect contact at the BMS. With this cable, the BMS can switch the MPPT on and off. Finally, the BMS still needs power. For that, I connect the battery plus contact of the BMS with a red plus cable to a plus contact of the fuse box using a 2 amp fuse. And I connect the battery minus contact of the BMS with a black minus cable to a minus contact of the fuse box. And that's it. Wiring of the solar system is done. Not so really complicated, or what do you think? Of course, all components of my solar system, which I used, are linked in the description below. And all other components, which you could also see, which are not relevant for the solar system, I will, of course, explain in another video in the future then. For starting the system, the panels still have to be disconnected and preferably covered with cardboard. Now, the 30 amp fuse for the solar system can be installed. This powers up the MPPT. In the setting of the Victron app for the MPPT, I then have to change the setting to my type of battery, that's lithium iron. Only now the MPPT is ready and I can connect the MC4 connectors and after that remove the cardboards. In the Victron app I can now see the voltage, that's uh, 41 volt, and the power, that's about 200 watt. And the battery gets charged with about 15 amp. So that's the proof that the solar system works. The only problem that I have now is that my roof rack looks totally unbalanced because I had to move the brackets back. And of course that's nothing I can accept. So I bought one more of these aluminium profiles and two more brackets from TS Tigris Synchro. And both of that I will attach now and let's see what it looks like then. The additional brackets are fast installed. I would recommend to use a piece of thin rubber, maybe from an old bicycle tube between the brackets and the van to avoid scratches that might turn into rust later. Additionally, we also installed 9mm resin coated plywood panels, which I painted in satin black in the front area of the roof rack. That has two reasons. First, I think the shadow on the roof might help to keep the interior of the van cooler. And second, I prefer to have a homogeneous dark surface up here that the van looks cooler on drone shots later. With the additional set of brackets, the roof rack looks for sure perfectly balanced again. I definitely like it and I would be curious to read your comments now. In the next video I will show and explain the other components of my electrical system and I will share the whole wiring diagram of my system. Enough for this video, if you enjoyed it please like, share, comment and subscribe and maybe also turn on the notification bell that you don't miss the next episode. See you next time!